Fellow producers, how's it going? Today we're gonna be making a beat like Cali. As requested by most of the voters on Twitter, so that's why we're doing this one. And if you requested something, then keep in mind that I do see them. Um, but I do go by which is most voted upon. And if you want to be able to vote, then on Twitter you can follow me and then vote on there. But let's just get into the tutorial. Um, I don't wanna, I feel like I'm already like getting off topic and it's been like five seconds. So I already have a grand piano instrument selected. And uh, I'm gonna turn up the volume because I always notice that the volume on the grand. Okay, I gotta turn down my actual volume on my computer, but the volume always seems to be super low on the grand piano, even even at like full volume. So I boosted it up six um, decibels. But I already have an idea, so it's gonna go something like this. And I'm gonna start recording. Uh-oh. And of course, I mess up already. Damn. All right. I'm going to split this up into two different ones and <clears throat> We're gonna come up with some variation and stuff, and of course I'm gonna have to fix up this mess right here. So when your when your piano roll gets all like small like this, you can zoom in by holding this tab right here. So you, it doesn't have to be a nightmare um, if it happens to be really small. Like a lot of people complain about the piano roll, but they don't know that you can actually zoom in and stuff. Um, but I'm gonna fix this and come right back, and that's our basic idea. All right, so I kind of fix everything. Um, still about the same as my original idea. No very no crazy variation yet, and I'm just gonna quantize this real quick or er, consolidate it with Command J, and that's just gonna make this into two solid kind of blocks. And I want to get right into some sort of uh, a sound that's gonna be I don't know. Should I? I don't know if I should just get some a basic instrument and then do the instrument layer later or if I okay you know I'm just gonna go with um, just a basic um, instrument that we can come up with a melody with and then later we'll change the sound because that's what I usually do I don't know. I'll have to think about this for a little bit and uh, come right back. All right, so here's what I have as an idea. Hopefully I can get it on my first try. All right, of course I mess up always. So kind of a basic idea right there. I don't know. We're gonna have to flip this second part around a little bit. Um, all right, for now we're just gonna keep it like this. And then this note right here is a little bit early. So it's an F and um, same thing. We have an F right here, this last note right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna somehow incorporate an F. I'm 
we'll be right back. I'm going to try to fix this um, kind of harmony problem. But at least we got to see the idea. And then now we can make some edits to make it work. All right, so after looking at a few of his songs, um, I determined that it would be a better BPM to go kind of up higher. And instead, what I'm going to do is to preserve that kind of slowness. Um, since I do like these chords and I don't want to... I don't want to make it too fast because right now if I play at 134, we used to be at, at 95, so now it's going to be a lot faster. And you can't like really feel them when they're that fast. So something that you can do is select your, um, so your melody or whatever and hit times two, and now it's going to be stretched. And at 136 is going to be, or sorry, 134 is going to be way slower now that it's double time. than what we had at 95, but at least we'll have that kind of elongated chord structure um, and still have a nice like tempo, I guess. And we can do the same thing for the melody because now the melody is gonna be super fast. And we don't necessarily want that. I mean, you could do that, but I don't know, maybe like in a drop part, but I don't know. I don't think it would be, um, I don't think it sounds that good to be honest. I quantized it so that it would be on time. And I'm gonna do the same with this one right here. And something I did is hit Command A, and now the selection is not the full thing. So this blue bar right here is um, kind of the selection range. So when I hit Command A, it's going to start at the notes. And when I hit times 2, now it's going to have like a different rhythm. So I kind of wanted to do that and actually split this into two different clips with command E. Um, select all of this, hit times two so that it's stretched, and I'm gonna bring this out here. And then for this one, I'm gonna hit command A and not select the whole thing, and hit times two, and now it's gonna have a different rhythm. And what I did for the melody to make it kind of work is, um, for this first part, instead of it having be having it be an F again, I made it into a G. So instead of so I made it into a G, and then the second part I changed it into an F, and the melody actually becomes an F and a D instead of a. Uh, D sharp and a G and it's kind of tense at that part but it's gonna kind of resolve when we bring in the main chord again and <clears throat> at this point um, we can get more fancy with the sound design I'll have to think a little bit because again I don't like making you guys sit through thinking because it's not usually I wouldn't recommend thinking but since I'm trying to recreate a certain style um, it's kind of a difficult, um, I have to kind of not go off of my own inspiration. I'll actually have to think about what a certain other person would do, which is why I don't recommend trying to actually copy somebody's style necessarily. You could, and you could eventually get good at it, but then it wouldn't be your own style. And also it kind of limits your creativity, but I kind of have to do that in order to at least fit to your guys' expectations. So I'm going to be right back. And something I wanted to add is that even with thinking and all that, there come certain points where I have to just use my own inspiration, which is why some people may say that it doesn't sound like a certain uh, person or style. Like it will be very similar. All At the end of the day, it's going to come down to me at least making some of my own choices because I'm not that other person. That other person has different tendencies and different things that um, excite their imagination, I guess.
All right, so, so this this one's going by pretty fast. Um, really, in his songs, usually there's not that much complexity in terms of numbers of instruments. So we're just really just going to get into the drop right now. And I'm going to get this same chord that we got. And when you're making music, you want to follow certain patterns and repeat certain things um, and then use variation to create differences. You don't want to come up with a different idea for each little section that you make. Like you want to keep repeating something but change it just a little bit each time. So we're going to keep the same fundamental chord on the drop except we may use a different instrument and we may um, play this chord a little bit differently. And I have a certain idea in mind. And it's not necessarily something um, that uh, Ikali has done before or whatever. Um, but it's just something that I was thinking. And again, like sometimes I have to go off my own uh, inspiration to go forward. But something that he does use that I wanted to add right away on the drop is a horn. And um, in one of my drum kits in the Trap Essentials kit, um, which you can get on seriebeats.com. One of the things that people wanted was they wanted horns and they wanted horn samples that they could use and I added um, C and then F uh, notes and a G note as well and you can transpose each one and each one is kind of on a different kind of key and uh, for this song, our our note starts on a C, so we're just gonna keep it as a C. And uh, but if it was on a different song, we could transpose it to a different note, and it would sound different. So it's kind of a something that people wanted, so I added that. Um, and I'm gonna shorten the beginning a little bit because it's kind of has a long kind of attack. I'm gonna do something like that. And again, um, I'm gonna be creative and add this piano. I'm gonna keep the piano in the drop, which is gonna be kind of strange, but you guys are gonna see what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna have kind of a roll like that and I'm gonna extend it. Um, but for now, we're just gonna keep it like that. And I wanna create a super saw, which is that huge kind of pad sound that you hear that kind of has the it has the wobble on it and it adds the whole rhythm to the song and for that serum is just excellent for those kind of sounds because uh, it's so full sounding and we can just go with the super saw to be honest or yeah super saw which is a bunch of saws so you turn up the voices And to be honest, 16 is a lot, but I'll do like, I don't know, like eight. And then we can add a second one and do eight more. And detune each one just a little bit. So we'll fine tune it like 11 up and the, actually, yeah, 11 up and then the other one, 11 down. Or maybe like nine or ten down. Very wide sounding, sounds very crisp. Um, really, that's all we need for now. We can add a secondary kind of layer as well. but I don't think that's necessary as of now. In the other videos, I use squares a lot for that. All right, so we're kind of um, stalling a lot right now. So chorus, I'm gonna try it. I don't know what it's gonna do for this sound, to be honest. I don't like the serum chorus, so I'm not gonna do anything with that. Um, 
yeah hyper dimension is cool but we're gonna have to tame it a little bit have it be less like aggressive sounds kind of strange right now it's like i don't know exactly what hyper dimension does like i've never heard of that effect really Oh, it adds more unison, I guess. And now we have this really thick sound. So we don't have to get too complicated. We could do stuff with filters, but I feel like this time I'm gonna try something different. Uh, but um so yeah we can do filters but i'm gonna try something different and uh let me come up with an idea for the actual notes and then i'll be right back all right so i added this piano part and i kind of added more notes to it and extended the chords and it's basically just the same chords but stacked up a bit higher and then one extra note and i rolled them out and this is what it sounds like. So I'm just gonna play it from the drop and then we're gonna keep going. So that's kind of the layout of the drop. So I wanted to actually add this instrument right here but first I wanted to add a sub which is just a very low sine wave and for this kind of a track where you have a really loud pad like that or sorry a very kind of wide spanning pad um, usually you want a bass that's not going to be too that's not going to take up too much space um, in the whole kind of spectrum in the mix so we want something that's going to be very low and it's going to stay in the low end and for that you would want to get a sub and it's important to have those sub ranges um, and you don't really need those kind of upper harmonics so uh, a low sine wave really does the trick and in Ableton it's called the hip hop sub and I can't f okay right there and basically it's gonna be very low if you don't have headphones you can't even hear this right now and I'm gonna turn off my quick edit rack because I think that um, the Ableton EQ kind of cuts off the lows even when it's all the way down. So I'm gonna turn it off. Or actually, I'm just gonna turn off the EQ and keep the rest. So it's gonna give us those low harmonics and then we're gonna be able to keep kind of the full range of the piano and of the chords. Um, so it starts at a C. You know what, let's just copy the notes that we had and move it to the sub. And then what we can do is just keep the bottom notes. Or what I like to do is hit zero and disable all the notes that we're not gonna be playing. And that way we can still see what's playing in the background. Um, we're gonna have to move this down a little bit. So we're getting kind of that rhythm that we want. And we want it to be very centered. So hit Command A and then Command U and it's gonna align it to the lines. So if you see these little lines right here, whatever setting you have, it's gonna align it to those lines. So if I have a really large setting and I hit Command U, it's gonna align it to the really big lines. But if I make the lines smaller, it's gonna align to the smaller ones. So always keep that in mind when you're quantizing because sometimes it's not gonna do what you want it to if you have the wrong kind of um, view setup so you want to make sure it's the right kind of amount of bars before you align it and now we're getting that low end that we wanted I'm gonna take it down an octave for this one you can do something like that <clears throat> um, but for now we're not gonna get too crazy with the sub we're just gonna wait what's this that one's too high All right, there we go. So you kind of want to play around, keep the same kind of notes, like I said. Always keep the same general progression. 
don't switch things up too much um but just switch your way of playing it so choose different instruments as you go forward and stuff and replace some of the notes and something i actually wanted to do is on this chord progression i wanted to have kind of a melody a little bit um for this chord right here so what i'm going to do is duplicate the track like i just did and then in here i'm going to hit command a and then o to disable all those notes or zero to disable them And let's kind of lower the volume or the velocity. All right. Now for the pad, again, we're going to keep those same notes. And obviously, we're not going to have it be aligned just like that. But if you listen to this, this is kind of what a sub does is it adds the low end and makes everything sound super full. So when you hear those pads that sound or that wobble effect that sounds super like wide and super full, um, it's because there's also a sub at the low end that's filling it out and making it sound super just up front and super um, present. But if I get rid of the sub, it's going to sound a lot weaker. So that's kind of a technique is when you want something to sound super present and super full, kind of fill up more of the range of the spectrum. And a sub is a good way to add the bass kind of range and make sure that it feels like it's super like saturated and super kind of fat sounding like like thick as heck. So. Um, but right now I'm going to work on the rhythm of this. So we're going to unmute, unsole the tracks. Um, and I may do this off camera, but hopefully I can get like a different rhythm than the piano and like we can go ahead and come back and then use the, uh, volume to create that wobble effect that you hear. So I'm going to do that real quick and be right back. I came up with a rhythm for the pad and we're just going to go ahead and listen to it real quick. That's our pattern right there. Um, now what I wanted to do is move this brass around and have it um, be more frequent, I guess, and actually start working on some drums as well. Um, but I'll start with the brass real quick since that's going to be pretty easy. So right now, um, again, this is from the Trap Essentials kit, and uh, I labeled it. It's a C, so... Uh, we know it's a C because I didn't transpose it yet. But on different chords, we're going to want to start on a different note. So if I copy this brass over to this chord right here and play it, it could still work. But what would be better is if we could match it to the actual note, which is to the actual um, like bass note, the, the main kind of foundational note of the chord, I guess. Uh, I forgot the word for it, but... If we transpose this to match it, so C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, it matches a lot better than if we had a C. So just a quick tip. And we can also take that and go down an octave. So really, if you um, needed horns and all that, the Trap Essentials kit has that 
um, so definitely check that out and there's like six samples I think I believe um, six different ones so there is a F1 and it's gonna be a lot more higher quality um, than transposing the C one so we could actually do that and the reason why I have these different notes is that um, when you start transposing too much it will start losing quality so maybe if you're doing a lower one you're gonna want to use maybe the F low kinda one and then transpose that instead of using the C one um, hopefully that makes sense um, I kinda just took different key notes that are at different points and um, sample those so that you have like a sample to transpose no matter what octave that you're at um, if that makes any sense but I kinda like using the C one and transposing it down it kinda gives it that artificial kind of effect I guess like slowed down a little bit or we can go higher again I like the lower um, note a little bit better. But let's keep doing this. There we go, that's nice. So for the first one, I'm not going to have that. The second one, I'm going to have a second C note. I want to copy this over. And this last one we're going to move up. And then have a low one. Alright, perfect. And then right here I have the drop part 2 because we're going to work on a second part that's going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, but for the drums, I'm going to go ahead and look for some drums and be right back. Again, I'm probably going to get it from the Premium Trap Essentials Kit because there's actually some of Ikali's samples in here as well. The Ikali kick. But there's some different ones, so I'm going to be right back. I'm going to have to browse a little bit. Alright, so my idea is basically laid out with the drums. Um, I may have to change some of these. But these are the drums that I selected, and let me make sure my volume's all right. So those are the two drums I selected, and then the kick. I just did the Cali kick, um, and here's what we have so far with everything laid out. So that's everything we have so far. Now, at this point, we want to go ahead and get the wobble down. So um, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the sub and the, the stack that we have, these stacked chords. And we're going to turn this all into one kind of instrument. We're just going to call this wobble. And now that these instruments are grouped together, we can actually either we can automate the volume or we can use whatever other plugin to do that. And something that um, you can use within Ableton is the auto pan effect. And you can, normally how you would use it is that it would actually kind of switch the panning from left to right depending on the rate and how much you want it panned. Um, so if I went ahead and played this, it's panning stuff, but what you can do is actually change the face to either 360 or 180 it doesn't really matter but it's gonna line up the left and the right and it's basically gonna instead of having the volume automate for both of them it's actually gonna have them automate together and it's gonna turn into one volume automation so as you can tell you can get that kind of flume I guess or 
Cali does it a lot. It's kind of really common um, in trap and stuff. Basically, whatever EDM, I guess. You can do it with different shapes as well. It's kind of cool. Um, but to demonstrate what the sub does, I'm going to mute it. And this is going to demonstrate what I was talking about, um, about having a thick, full sounding, just really warm and like fat kind of sound. The sub is going to actually do that. So if I remove it, it's going to sound really thin compared to with the sub. That's why I say Kali uses some sort of low bass like the sub. And then when you add that, when you unmute it and you add it to the wobble effect and synchronize it with your saw, it's going to turn into just this really warm sounding sound. So this is kind of like a prime example of like layering sounds and the type of amazing stuff you can do when you layer different, the different strengths of different sounds together and you make a new sound that has all of the strengths and the different aspects combined but um so yeah at this point we're gonna have to find out we can either uh, synchronize it like this uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset it by 180 just so that it's lined up we can do something like that or we can kind of do the free kind of rate, but it's going to be a lot harder to automate. But I can be more creative with that. Um, but I'm going to think a little bit off camera and I'll be right back and maybe do the automation. And then we'll see what we got when we come back. But hopefully that was helpful and you learned something new with the auto pan. So I finished automating the pad that we had. And as you can tell right here, we have the auto pan sync rate and uh, right here I'm using the triangle kind of setup and I can shift it from a triangle to a sine wave and then to kind of a square wave and it's gonna have a different kind of effect each time and uh, yeah let's just go ahead and play what I made so far So if you paid attention down here, you could see that it was changing rates. And um, I mean, there's a little bit of clickiness between it because I didn't do the uh, actual hertz. I did the preset kind of snapped um, rhythms. So it's going to snap to the closest like quarter or eighth, depending on the setting. Um, but hopefully I'll find a way to kind of smooth those clicks out a little bit. Um, with like maybe some volume automation or something but uh, what I was gonna do next was um, oh yeah I was gonna create the second part to the drop so we have a really basic kind of um, idea right here or kind of a good foundation I would say and now we can start getting more creative so I hit command D and it copied everything over and this melody that we have right here. I'm going to take it and I'm going to apply it to a different instrument. But for now, we're just going to listen to what it would sound like with the chords that we have. Or with the wobble effect. So we can get really, really creative. This sounds really nice. Um, and as well, I'm going to try to do something with some sort of vocal chop, like a very simple one, like something that's going to be more in the background and kind of echo out, I guess, instead of being like very choppy, it's going to be more of a ambient addition, I guess. I'm using a preset from my uh, Lush kit right now, my Lush preset pack. And 
I just wanted to record an idea that I just got on camera, so let me go ahead and play this. Uh-oh, one more time. So that's the basic idea, something like that. Just very simple and it's gonna be more in the background. Um, but yeah, kind of a softer sound. I may do like a, some sort of layer or something where I have a different sound leading into it um, and kind of change the texture a little bit, but who knows. Um, sounds like a Oshi type of sound. All right, so we have this, um, what is this called? A uh, low kind of down, lo-fi down sampled effect right here. Gives it a different feeling. And, uh. All right. But I'm gonna get back to the acapella kind of chop or whatever, the vocal chops, and then I'll be right back. So I wanted to add something a little bit more creative. And within the Lush kit, one of the sounds that I had was a bass, and it sounds like this. And what I did is originally it was at um, two, like for the mod wheel, the mod wheel is this wheel right here and it controls the, uh, sorry, the pitch bend wheel is that wheel and it controls the pitch. And you can go ahead and do that. And what I did is I moved it up to 12 and negative 12 and that makes it into an octave. So when I do that, it's gonna jump a whole octave. And I thought this would be a cool like transition sound um, to add between different parts and I'm gonna mute a lot of things and just solo it with the um, with the main chords and then oh yeah I gotta select it um, so again, if you like this sound, uh, it's from the Lush kit as well. So I was thinking something like that. Maybe have it be a little bit closer. All right, let's try something like that. Something basic. Something like that. And I'm gonna shift it over a little bit because it was a little bit early. And it's gonna be a subtle kind of transition. I'm gonna cut out a lot of the low end. So I'm gonna move it up to 250 in my EQ that I have down here. And yeah, now that the drop is basically finished, what I wanted to do is work on this intro because if you listen to the intro, it's currently very simple and then some of these instruments need to be changed around. Um, but I did basically finish the drop. I'm probably gonna do a little bit more additions later, but uh, they're probably not gonna be worth recording really. It's gonna be a bunch of you know trial and error. So I just wanted to work on the intro instead and filling that out and maybe changing some of these instruments. Um, like usually it'll be a pad or some sort of chord that'll do that. Uh, but it could be anything. But for this tutorial, I just wanted to do the pad instead. So 
just going to use a preset and usually it'll be filtered so something like this I'm going to turn on the resonance a little bit So, and we're going to copy the same chords that we have in the piano up to the, to our pad. Um, but for now, you can hit command A and then hit legato and all the notes are going to be extended. Let's see what it sounds like one step lower. All right, definitely not. All right, up high is kind of sounding weird too so just gonna keep it how it is and it's very loud so I need to turn down that as well and right now it's very plain sounding so again what we can do is add tremolo so just like we did with the pad we can have the phase be at zero so instead of it being panned I mean we could have it be panned a little bit um, but we're gonna we're gonna find out what it sounds like just like this first turn on turn up the volume a little bit for this I guess I'll have some sort of uh, phase going on so it pans a little bit. It's a little bit loud, so I'm gonna turn it down again a little bit. Um, so this is gonna be kind of our intro pad. Oops. And I'm gonna use something like LFO tool to get kind of a side chain effect, I guess. Or I don't know, we can use another auto pan. Um, let me try a different setting on auto pan. You can do something like that. That's too slow. I'll bring that effect in on the second part, I think. So uh, we're gonna get to the amount and then we're slowly gonna bring it in right here. And then from there, we're gonna bring this up and then bring this all the way at the end. <laughs> Sounds really good right now. Let me turn down my volume. Holy crap, it was super loud. All right, so that's it for that pad. Let's move on. Um, something I do want to add is some sort of uh, vocal reverb, and we can really just take get an audio track. Um, let me duplicate these vocals, and then we'll do this. Call it duplicate. You're gonna solo it, and we're gonna add like some heavy, heavy reverb on this, 
and then see how it's going to turn out. So long tail is what I like to use. Let's get a sample. All right, that's the wrong one. Uh, where's the vocals? Right here. Long tail. Let's get a sample. Put it up to like ninety five percent. All right, that's a nice one right there. Uh, let's go ahead and solo this. And, and we're gonna, gonna do, do, we're gonna make sure that this output goes to 15 audio, which is this one. And then we're just gonna record. And these are going to be our reverb tails right here. We can do some stuff with the reversing kind of effect. Let me boost the volume on this a little bit as well. So just kind of filling up the space, being creative. Um, and we're gonna maybe like do some sort of pitch bending. So go into envelope, hit the little triangle or the arrow up here, and then go to transposition. And then we can do some weird kind of stuff with this. And this is the pitch that I'm controlling right now. Can be very creative with it. All right, just some random stuff like that. Let's boost some of these a little bit. And that's kind of too aggressive, I think. Like, like make it like 500. And maybe add some more effects, like some chorus or something. Something unique that's going to make it st sound different and stand out. That's so cool. All right, let's add maybe a little bit more volume at the end on this intro pad. Let's 
Like, let's just boost it up a little bit near the end. And we want it to be subtle, but um, still like audible, like you can hear it kind of building up. And I don't know why this isn't extended all the way, but I'm gonna do that real quick. Alright, now I want to do something else, which is I want it to be, I want it to have a pitch down effect. So recently I had, I got this plugin um, called Shaper Box and it has like Wave Shaper, Volume Shaper and all that. And they recently had this Time Shaper one, which is the whole reason I got it. And it's kind of like gross beat in FL Studio where you can like draw a curve. Um, but I want to have a slow down effect on this It should be one bar long and I'm gonna turn off the effect and I just drew a downwards kind of curve which is gonna slow down the time um, basically how this plugin works is that the, the ver horizontal sorry the vertical axis is the time and then the um, horizontal axis is kind of the rhythm I guess and as it goes through it's gonna trigger different time events so when you start having a kind of downwards accelerating kind of thing it's either gonna um, it's gonna slow it down it's kinda hard to explain I will have to like think about it myself even how how it kinda works before I can explain it but basically if you have different steps it's gonna trigger different time like periods so if it goes on to this part and then it reaches here it's gonna go back negative two fourths of a bar um, if that makes any sense and when you start having like lines like this it's gonna do kind of a slow down effect um, and when you have curves it does a, a tape stop so um, kinda confusing to explain like it's kinda hard for me to explain it but you can just hear the effect when it happens So we're going to have it be on the second kind of part right here. There we go. That's really cool. All right, that's too much. We'll have it be a little bit more subtle. So that's kind of the intro right there. Um, I'm gonna add some percussion, like some shaker sounds or something. Very common in this um, producer's uh, sound design is like shakers and stuff. So I have this really long sample right here. I'm gonna turn on the volume on it like quite a bit. Mm -hmm. 
Add some reverb. Turn up the pad a little bit, it's a little bit quiet. So it kind of does like a back in time effect as I bring it down. Like the further down you go, the further back in time it goes. Um, and you can either have it step, like be like full steps and go backwards. Or what you can do is like something like this. Or you can have lines and curves that are going to warp the time and distort it and stuff. So it's kind of cool. And I could even add it to the pad and stuff, but um, like to the actual like drop. But I will go ahead and do that off camera if I need to. I'm gonna work a little bit more on the intro, but that's basically all like kind of the bulk of everything that we're gonna do. Actually, um, I'll have to change this sound still because it's way too basic. So I'm gonna go ahead and think of something that I can like make and then be right back. All right, so I changed this instrument for uh, that we had for the little chords right here. And so that's basically it. It was pretty simple. It was just one of the presets that I had from an Ableton pack. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is change the grand piano. Um, because we're using the default Ableton one and I believe Omnisphere okay so it seems that my Steam folder is messed up I have it on an external hard drive so it's kinda sometimes it messes up like right now but I'm gonna replace this with a Keyscape kind of um A keyscape piano and Omnisphere started working again and for this I'm gonna be using the for the piano I'm gonna use the cinematic keyscape piano because I just think it sounds perfect for this song and it's just so much more soft and it's like has so much finesse I love that word finesse is so soft and then at the end we have the reverb and it's a default Ableton reverb and people love to complain like they always find things to complain about like I'll be online and they'll complain about the default reverb and stuff but I think it just does its job pretty nicely in this song so you don't need the best tools you just need to understand what you're using and make the most of what you have and you can make something that's satisfying you don't have to point out the flaws and everything so looking back on this video I realized that there's a lot of things that I didn't go over and that I literally just kind of skipped over because they were kind of off camera and um, one of those was the vocal chops so I'm just gonna go back and go over them and really with vocal chops it's just like any other sample so right here in the mixing process I added like a chorus and a phaser just to give it kind of a extra terrestrial kind of weird kind of phased feeling but um, as you can tell, you can see the name of the acapella. And this is actually available in my acapella packs that I released for free. There was like a video. Um, so if you find that video, I think it was for 2K or 3K subs, I forgot. Um, 
there is this acapella in there but really it's just a chop and then i aligned it um i found out that if i transposed it up by three it would match the key of my song and then i chopped parts that sounded good and then i added a ping pong delay so um i'll just disable it for now And then what you're hearing with the pitch is actually a pitch modulation that I did. Um, I literally went into the envelopes down here. I hit the little E and then hit the arrow and then I went to transposition. And I was able to do those kind of pitch down and pitch up effects. And it was just a lot of trial and error. So I know if I, I knew if I wouldn't, if I didn't, show this that a lot of people will complain but really there's like not much that you can like do to there's not much to explain it's basically finding nice chops where there's a nice note to it and a nice vocal like timbre to it and then aligning the rhythm maybe of the words and then just trying different ideas. It took me literally an hour. So it wouldn't have been practical to record like the full process. It was just like, just trial and error. Um, and as you do more of them, you get better, but it's just really simple. It's just chopping up audio. So don't get caught up in it and like be confused by it. Um, but I just wanted to go over that real quickly. And then as well, I didn't go over um, the hi-hats that I made. It was actually pretty basic. It's not that complicated, but again, trial and error for samples, just trial and error and drums and all that. So, and then one more thing I added was a snare that has some reverb on it. And I added that on the second snare of each kind of every four, one, two, every eight, actually, one, two, three, four. Every four bars, I added it, and then I would get rid of the other four bars. Like, so there's one here, no, no snare here. One here, and then no snare. Um, there's actually one more thing, and it was the pad kind of like downwards, kind of shifting effect. And what was that? What that was was an audio recording of the actual pad and what I did was I took the auto pan wait let me find the I took the auto pan and as you can tell right here with this part here there was a clip so this clip right here and there was a pitch bend as you can tell with the mod wheel and then I use the auto pan to do this down shifting effect and I don't even think it's enabled right now auto pan device on yeah but if I turn it on uh, okay so I did actually delete the like kind of the whole setting that I had but basically I set it up so that it would have this rhythm and then I transferred it into audio so that's where that came from and then that's basically it for this whole song everything else I went over and uh, yeah alright so one thing I forgot to mention is that I added some fills and uh, a ton of people always ask me where the fills come from and I actually made a fills pack that's pretty cheap um, but basically what a fill is is basically some drum loops that you can chop up and align to your to your arrangement and it'll it'll kinda um, be in time and add some rhythmic like breakdowns I guess so I have to turn down my volume there for a second it 
kind of adds that breakdown so so if you were wondering where that was from it's from my fills pack um, on serybeats.com so I just wanted to add that in real quick um, but if you did enjoy this video go ahead and leave a like and let me know what you learned what you appreciated and who you want to see next most importantly because we keep grinding we keep making more of these and uh, yeah together we can do more that's the slogan so you guys feed me the ideas um, and I will do my take on it um, and personally I think this song came out pretty pretty reasonably similar to Ikali and if you want to go ahead and vote for the next person then go ahead and follow me on Twitter because then that's where I have a poll for the top kind of choices and then that's where we decide but again I hope you guys enjoyed I'm gonna mix this completely and I'll see you guys next time